You asked and we listened. Today we're presenting the Concert Artist Series Digital Pianos from Kauai. We have the CA-49 and the CA-59. Besides the price difference, what are the differences? Hi, Ted Barcelor with Alamo Music Center in beautiful downtown San Antonio, Texas. And I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels. We have a couple of them. You can sign up for notifications, leave us comments, like our videos. We love to interact with you guys and hear your feedback. Today, Ted, I'm real excited. We finally have got our shipment in of the CA-59s. And a lot of our comments have been requesting, oh, we want to see what the 49 looks like versus the 59. We want to see what the 59 looks like against the 79. All that content is coming to you. Today, we are doing, we're focusing on the 49 versus the 59, the entry point into the Concert Artist Series from Kauai. So right off the bat, I love the Concert Artist Series, the wooden keys for me. Um, I'm not a super skilled player. Ted, you're an amazing player, but what, what does a wood key mean to you? A wooden key mean, to me means a, a balanced fulcrum, balanced action, and plus it's not hollow inside. A lot of keyboards have hollow keyboards or they're, they're falsely weighted, but when you have a real wooden key, it's got at least the touch the t uh, and the timbre mm -hmm. seems to come through the wood which is kind of what you get on a real piano. Yeah, no, the, the things I've heard described are you feel that you know, vibration through natural uh, resource like wood. Um, and so it's really important to, to kind of feel what you're playing. Um, a lot of people will think, oh, a keyboard's good enough for my kid. They're learning. They, don't, they just need something to, to make the noise and, and stop making the noise. But really, that dynamic range is really felt through the instrument. Um, and I just, I, I applaud Kawhi for doing that throughout their concert artist series to say, hey, we want to make an affordable piano with a wood key all the way down at the very entry point, the CA-49. Um, and that goes, that wooden key goes all the way up to the CA-99. So just a great feeling instrument right off the bat. Um, but yeah, so the, they, I think that's kind of the focus for them is to get the most realistic feeling instrument they can at an affordable price point. Um, so these two models, the CA-49 and 59, about an $800 difference between the two. Um, and so that's not... A, that's not chump change. That's that's a no. A, that's a good amount. It's a pretty substantial jump from the forty nine to the fifty nine. What do you get? Um, you had, you were talking. You immediately wanted to know speakers. Speakers, amplifiers. Uh, what are the difference in uh, speakers, amplifiers, and also the sound card, if there's any? And is there, are there any kind of uh, details that? Uh, give one an advantage over the other? And if so, what is the advantage? Are you allowed to go in and alter the sounds any or do some kind of personalization on your piano setup? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's very cool to see um, what, where they draw the line. So um, on the CA-49, you're getting about 40 watts of output power um, versus the 59 where it jumps up to 100 watts. And so that's actually a, a very substantial jump. It's more than double. Yeah, yeah it's more than double. And so if, having a good of good volume and and that doesn't just mean how much volume you're getting out of it it, it it's a lot more complicated that when it comes to sound well, it's a balance because you put a bigger amp you put a bigger speaker so you're moving a little bit larger air mass and you're getting a richer truer tone so yeah so a little bit closer to being able to control that dynamic range that a piano might have um, and so they give you a lot more wattage on, on once you jump up. Um, one of my favorite things is Bluetooth audio. So both of them have Bluetooth MIDI capability, um, and that will be impactful if you're using um, an iPad to control the virtual technician on here. So you, there's adjustments you can make um, to change the voices, to change how uh, the piano sounds, um, and that can be done through a, a Bluetooth control device, um, and that's Bluetooth MIDI. But the 59 actually has Bluetooth audio. Um, which is I, a lot of right. our parents that we see, a lot of um, students that we see, a lot of players, they actually will pull up a YouTube video, have an iPad on the music rest, pull up a YouTube video, play Carol King, and the, and, the, and the sound starts coming out of your speakers, coming out of the instrument, and you can play along to it. You can add right. whatever instrument you like to that. That's such a long, far cry from 
when I was younger learning songs, you had to go put the record on the needle, come back, play, and then if it skipped, and then go back and start over again. And you can repeat the process, which is how you learn. Mm -hmm. And that's what practice is, is. You do this 10, 20 times, and then you start figuring out the song without any music, and you play exactly what the artist is playing. And so it makes it really, really convenient in this day and age to use Bluetooth to, yeah. to do that. It's a, so that's a huge benefit, I think, to the 59. One of the, I think one of the big jumping points um, is moving on to that Bluetooth audio and kind of getting it as, if this is something you're spending a lot of money on, why not make it a great sounding speaker system in your house? If it's in that front room, if it's in the dining room, you can make this, oh, oh you, ah. could, you could <laughs> use it as a stereo, just blast your music through it. It's a great, clean, 100 watt, 50 watts a side. You have split uh, bass and mids and treble on both sides. It's a great sound system. So, so right there, something that the 49 might not have or might not be able to do is create a sound system in your house. If that's something, this is going to be an entertainment device. Why not have it as sure. a multifaceted? Um, but talking about the actual piano, um, you're getting, uh, so polyphony is something that a lot of people will see. They're like, oh, this keyboard has X amount of polyphony. This one has more. Is that bad? Is that good? Um, so the 49 is going to have 196 note polyphony. The CA-59 is going to have 256 polyphony. And so I'm going to get Ted to kind of describe it. If you're a first-time player, beginner, a parent looking for what this information means, it can be confusing. But I, Ted's going to try to do his best to explain what polyphony means and how it might affect a player. Polyphony is the ability to play more than one note at a time and for the instrument to reproduce more than one note at a time. And while there's only 88 keys on a piano, uh, a full piano, uh, why would you need 196 note polyphony or 256 note polyphony? Well, the idea behind that is the sound system is both split and stereo, left and right. So of all the notes that are on the piano, it takes one half to get the left side and another half to get the right side. So on 256 polyphony, you're basically looking at notes that are about 120 per side, mm -hmm. a little bit more than that. And when you press down on the sustain pedal, and so you hit this note, if you could hit all of them at the same time, you'd have 88. If you could hit them twice, well, then that would be like, you know, you'd have 170 some odd notes. Mm -hmm. All of those will not sound because some of them will have to get cut off so that others can make if the sustain pedal is on. Without the sustain pedal, it'll just sound like a regular piano. The difference has come when you press the sustain pedal and you're trying to get a little bit of uh, legato and smoothness between the notes so those notes carry over before the other one starts. That's going to use up your polyphony okay. quickly. Okay, and so do you think 196 and 256 would be accommodating for a beginner, intermediate player? <laughs> I think both of them are great. Of course, then again, I started with an 8-bit machine that only had like 32 note polyphony. So it was good to play a chord and then let it off and play another chord. Uh, the way things are now, it's, uh, you almost have to listen to hear drop out. So, so very minute detail that uh, you might see on a lot of different, if you're comparing specs on different models, we just wanted to explain real quick what that polyphony is. And if you're looking at these two specifically, are you going to be noticing that difference? A piano, there is no polyphony on a piano. It's the limits of technology. We are in such an advanced state in the year 2020 that we are arguing about 196 it's, and 256. What would be the best for great you? Great to take those things for granted. Uh, years ago, it was a technological and an engineering nightmare to try to put more notes on a piano. So just that's a very, a very uh, minute detail, but we did want to point it out for, we've had questions, lots of questions actually about polyphony and what's important about it. Um, Again, with the sound card and, and the sound engine on these, you do get another piano voice on the CA-59 in that rendering engine that you do not get on the, for, on the 49. So the CA-49 has the SKEX uh, stereo sample and the EX stereo sample. The 59 adds the SK-5 uh, stereo sample. So the SK-5 is not the full concert length Shiguru Kawai. The SK-5, I believe, is going to be about a six and a half foot, or no, seven. It's a standard size. Yeah, it's a seven, studio, foot, yeah. a seven foot grand piano there. So that is something to note. You do get a little bit more advanced piano workings on the CA-59. You also, the, when the resonance model, modeling that's going on, you get a little bit more you get cabinet resonance cool. and you get undamped resonance, undamped string resonance on the CA-59. On the CA-49, you're getting 
just the string resonance and just the damper resonance. So they've added a little bit more complex sound engine to the CA-59. We're gonna play these both today for you because we want you guys to hear if you can hear that difference, if it's important to you. They definitely take their time putting the features into the 59 to say, hey, we really tuned tune this to be more of an intermediate instrument right. for, for different players. You also get more controls. We'll show you guys the control panel on both of these, but a little bit easier to navigate on the CA-59. You have the buttons there, you have the menu options. If you're gonna not be using an app like the iPad app, it might be easier for you to, to click through the buttons and try those out. We're gonna go through some presets here. We're gonna listen to what they sound like. You guys let us know. Again, we're pulling these directly from the units. So that 100 watts of power and that 40 watts of power, you're not gonna hear the difference here through YouTube today, but that is a power difference between these two that output power can, can mean a lot in the different environment if it's going in a home, on a stage, in a music studio. So let's check it out, let's play it, Ted. Let's see what we, what we like, what we don't like. Let's, let's get back to these people on how good these instruments are. Sounds great.
So Ted, your initial reaction after playing that, these both have the grand feel action, by the way. So sim identical action between the two of them. What did you think? I thought they both played great. They both play wonderful. They sound great. There is a little bit more of roundness and fullness that you get from the CA-59. And uh, I also noticed that there's a little bit difference uh, in the number of sounds that you get in the, in the sound card library. The yeah. CA-59 and 49, are, are, they're a little bit different. The 49 is going to have 19 voices in there. The 59 is going to have 44 voices. So a little bit more rounded out, you know, you get a little bit more organs, get a more digital pianos, things like that that you can work with. I really like that virtual technician too. We, we showed you guys some of the presets on the pianos, but you can go through there and really make the piano sound your own. You can adjust up to 19 parameters on both of these. And with those parameters, really create your own piano sound. You can be the technician. I, I think that's one of the coolest things that Kawhi does in this concert artist is you are in control of your instrument. It's a very cool, a very cool series. I also want to tell you guys that there's a really cool thing here for students, especially beginners. It's called Concert Magic. Concert Magic basically teaches you rhythm over teaching you notes and finger styling. It, it really focuses on how important it timing. is. Yeah, timing. How timing. important timing is to a student, to a beginner. That These recognizable songs, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, Happy Birthday, planning out the rhythm and when the notes come in, when those chords hit are so important, especially for young, young for kids. Young it makes playing music so much easier to be thinking of it from a, from a rhythm perspective. That's first. the original challenge is to be there on time. Not late, not not too early, but right on time. That's what timing in, in music is all about. So it's just a very cool, different perspective of learning. And I wanted to point that out because I think it is a unique offering here from Kauai. And it's teaching timing. And the, you know, for students, they also have built into these uh, digital pianos or the lesson songs so they can go through and, and learn and practice along with with the, the piano playing along with them. Yeah. And so they can learn their mistakes and how to work them out. The different, the different learning books like Alfred's Piano Book um, and just some of the traditional finger method uh, anthologies that, that you've gone through right, many of them. them. Um, and so there's, there's pl plenty in these models that have an offering for any student, any teacher, any beginner, intermediate. I feel like these are a great offering. Hope you guys enjoyed the way they sounded. Um, let us know what you guys think. If you wanted to see anything different, um, we really are, are, are happy to show you guys the CA-59. We have been waiting months to see this and uh, bring it up against the CA-49, which is a great offering. Again, we're Alamo Music Center. This is Ted Barsu. I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channels. We have a couple of them. Uh, we love to, to see you guys interact with us. Leave us comments, sign up for notifications, like our videos, and please reach out to us if you have any questions about digital pianos, real pianos, guitars, band instruments. We do it all here in San Antonio, Texas. And we love to see you guys hear from you. So thank you guys for watching. I think we're going to, to do a little demos here. Ted's going to take right. us through and we're going to look at styles. We're going to look at songs and some of the voicing. Um, and again, yeah, let's check it out, Ted. Uh, the, let's take it. They've upgraded the sound card in it. So we're going to have a good, good listen and see what kind of changes they made. Awesome. 